We will start. It's almost yeah. done by now. Yeah. So yes. Yeah. Good morning, ma'am. Good, good morning. Ma I'll just uh, uh, tell good morning to all and then hand yeah. over to you. Yes. Okay. No issue. So good morning to all the participants. Uh, today, uh, as per the schedule, uh, doc, uh, Dr. Sushma. For the world, Madam will be speaking on uh, the topic, and uh, in the next session, Dr. Ashish will be speaking on the topic given allotted to him. So, welcome to the second day of the capacity building program. And uh, my colleague, Dr. Rajeshri Deshpande, will introduce the guest speaker of the uh, day two, session one, and then Madam will take over and start with her session. Over to you, Dr. Rajeshri. Thank you, Kinnani ma'am. Today we are having a session on review of literature. Uh, yesterday we learned how to frame research objectives, research problem. And this review of literature is from a very well-known person, Dr. Sushma Podwal ma'am. She has retired as a university librarian and head of SHPT School of Library Science. She is a recipient of H.D. Velankar Veda Prize for Sanskrit. She has organized various seminars and devised training courses for library staff on various themes such as new trends in academic librarianship, library ergonomics, and so on. She is a member of an edit two editorial board of two international peer-reviewed journals. She has completed minor research. 
She has contributed to writing through three books and various bibliographies of library figures. Six students have been awarded PhD under her guideship. She has attended international national conferences and currently she is conducting lecture for pre-PhD course viva, course work, sorry. And she is designing online course on teaching reading uh, with IDEMI Mumbai. Welcome Dr. Sushma Podwal, ma'am. Hello, good morning. Good morning. At the outset, uh, let me thank Dr. Kinnari Thakkar, head of the Department of Commerce of University of Mumbai, and also Dr. Shukla, madam, honorary director, ICSSR, for inviting me here for the presentation of such a seminal topic like literature review, as this is, this is one of the early tasks in research. I thank both of them for calling me for faculty development program here. And then I now start my presentation just now. I'm sharing my screen. Is it okay? No, madam. So far, it is not come. Yes. Is it visible? And am I audible? Hello? Hello? Ma'am, you are audible, but the screen sharing has not started. Achha, okay. I'll do you it again. Click that green button, screen sharing. Yeah, yeah. I'll yes, do it again. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yes, ma'am, we can see now. You can see now. Ma yes, ma'am, screen is shared. Yes, yes, good morning. Good morning. Now, I'm going to dwell upon eight to nine topics today. Uh, they are, what is literature review? Then how it helps the researcher in laying the foundation of the research and what it's ideal, ideally it should do, how it should be done or steps of conducting research since literature search is the first step, I'll be dwelling about, upon the literature search and the search techniques also. So it will be linked to the search, searching strategies, strategies and techniques. Then what are the sources in commerce and how to critically evaluate the sources? So what are the further stages in literature review, structuring the literature review, sections of literature review, and lastly, but most importantly, pitfalls in literature review. So let us see what is literature review. Literature review is a comprehensive survey of the works published in a particular field of study. So for us today, it will be in commerce. You have to uh, uh, take a comprehensive survey and take a look of the material published in your topic. And also, if it is an interdisciplinary topic, you will also have to look into some of the other disciplines. So what has been published in the other disciplines? Now, what type of sources we're going to see? It is, in a way, summary of research published earlier, but it is not only the summary. It is something beyond that. We are going to see that also today. It starts with literature search. So literature search is the first step and it is one of the important steps in research. Now, how literature review helps the researcher? It helps the researcher in gaining the background of the knowledge, background knowledge of the research topic. It starts with your project proposal or PhD proposal and it ends at the time of submission of, or at the time of writing stage or writing the last chapter, I should say. It also helps in identifying the concepts relating to it. For example, if your topic is online courses in commerce, the concept about MOOC, about online courses, you should go into it at the time of review, review of literature. It helps you in formulating the researchable hypothesis. We are going to see that 
how even hypothesis can be formulated with the help of whatever has been done earlier, whatever hypothesis have been formed by the earlier researcher and how you can improve upon them or how it, they can be relevant to your topic and how you can uh, go beyond that. Again, it also helps to identify appropriate methodology by comparing and looking into what type of methodology is used for what type of research by other researchers. Now next, it also helps to decide your own research design, then to identify documentary sources used by other resources, researchers. That is literature search. In literature search, you go on identifying what has been used, looking at their reference page at the end, or bibliography in the earlier researches. To identify gaps in earlier research, this we are going to see how we identify gaps in earlier research and to lay good foundation of your own research work. So literature review helps you. And what it should ideally do, it should ideally support the main area of understanding it should identify knowledge gaps in the topic or in the field, we should say. It should also suggest modification or addition to the conceptual framework that has been presented up till now, up till that time when you start your research. And it should also compare the results and conclusions by different authors. This can be done with evaluation of their research. So literature review is not just uh, getting the gist of whatever has been done earlier. It is also an evaluation. Again, one very important work that is done by these people. Uh, I will take the questions in the end. Please, I will take the questions at the end. Now, it also identifies the need, or we should say the gap analysis, need for your topic while you choose your topic. Why? Because we are examining the available literature on your own topic. Then what you do? You are to synthesize and summarize those topics of earlier research, what they have done, or even journal articles, database, uh, databases you will go into, books. So important books also are included. Then other important material which we are going to see, you identify research gaps and that itself becomes the reason for your taking up that topic because that is a gap in research in your own field. So the, your research will be filling this gap so that you have to prove. Then you can present your agenda highlighting these gaps in earlier research. Now let us take again ahead the example of on online courses in commerce. Now the gaps in earlier research can be nobody has done study on MOOCs in commerce or later on. Now if you are choosing the topic just now, you can identify a gap that nobody has studied the online classes or online courses in commerce in COVID period. So this is the gap. So you can highlight on this gap and this is the purpose or this is the need of gap analysis and it fulfills that need. The, uh, the literature review fulfills this need. Let us take one example. For example, role analysis of family entrepreneurs is the topic. And if you find that there is no earlier role analysis done, even of other entrepreneurs, other entrepreneurs, so non-family entrepreneurs also, there is no study. So no study on family entrepreneurs, so you are choosing that topic, but there is no study on non-family entrepreneurs, in general entrepreneurs as a base. So you can do a small study or minor research, and this can be the result of gap analysis in literature. So it serves this purpose. So I have taken this example. 
Now steps in literature review. Let us see the steps in literature. You are picking up a broad topic, then you are narrowing down that for relevant articles. Then you look at the scholarly peer-reviewed articles, that is articles in peer-reviewed journals. Now care list is out. So you will look into care list journals, care, uh, the journals listed in the care list. So literature search starts. You analyze the research that is done earlier, know the authors and material, you evaluate them, see their structure, see their uh, uh, hey, uh, authority, look into the authority, then look at what are the findings, what is missing, what is the method adopted by them, and then you decide for your own research. Now, literature search being the first and foremost step in literature review, it is very important to do literature search. So it is said that give a man a fish and you feed him for a day. This is a Chinese proverb. But teach a man to fish and you feed him for a lifetime. So you teach them literature search. So in the literature review, this is important and this is done by librarians many a time. Many a times they conduct uh, in literacy programs and in that they teach literature search how it is done. We are looking into it in a short uh, manner in this short time span. So creating a good tutorial on the topic or on or presentation and tell you how to fish. Tell the students how to fish, how to do literature search. This always helps. So let us see what is literature search, how it is done, how literature review is done. Let us see first. So you list relevant representative literature. How it is done, we are going to see. You identify the useful information there. Then survey the knowledge base. So this part is done at the beginning of your research by surveying the knowledge base, how it is developed in your own topic. Then focus on researchers' gain in knowledge. How, step by step, researchers are gaining something in the field and what is your contribution? You have to think ahead. Specific focus providing the context. This also should be done in literature review. It should give discussion on previous in investigations. We are going to see how steps in literature search. Select the source from libraries, we are going to look into the sources and internet, even online digital libraries, you can go to that. OPACs, online public access catalogs, get concepts clarified with glossaries, subject dictionaries and encyclopedias. Use catalogs, bibliographies, indexes and databases. Sometimes Ready-made bibliographies on your topics are available on the internet, but you should know how to search them. Then search for the documents, paper-based as well as e-documents, like books, e-books, articles, e-journal articles, thesis, annual reports, standards, patents. And we are seeing how primary documents are important. So your search strategy, strategy starts first. Here, you identify the key concepts and terms. So what you do, you identify the key concepts and terms. Then you select relevant resources and databases. After that, you combine search terms using Boolean logic. This also we are going to see. These are Boolean operators, and or not. So you make your own search refine. You refine your search. Then run searches in selected sources. Review and refine the results. Identify the key concepts. This goes on. And at least thrice you have to do this literature review. At the beginning, when submitting the proposal, in the mid of your research to see whatever is going on latest. And thirdly, at the end of your research, when you are doing the last, uh, when you are writing the last chapter. Now, the sources of information. Let us look into the sources of information. 
they are primary secondary and tertiary sources you can start with tertiary sources like bibliographies and indexes look into the bibliographies or references of earlier research that has been done and then go in for other resources secondary resources so go the other way around then go to books and encyclopedias only choose the books that are very important don't go into textbooks again encyclopedias are helpful to give the references down below the articles and also sometimes concept concept clarification even concept for concept clarification subject dictionaries are you'll helpful and definitions from subject dictionaries are always helpful in research then primary sources these are of utmost importance so these are to be noted down these are thesis journals manuscripts patents which give original research this is original contribution again you are contributing to the primary research okay next after the sources of information search engines you can go to these sources like google scholar through consortia like indest or infonet to databases like ebsco or proquest then through digital libraries and institutional repositories or through web opacs we are going to see that now always see to it that you use academic search engines for research these are some of them i have given uh www.googlescholar academicresearch.com infomind.ucr.edu so look into this is university of california resources look into good universities pages or uh, digital libraries and look into the appendages like ac.in or gov which give original data or which give reliable data now on the net you can get e journals and there is a directory of e journals or open access journals there was open access movement from 2000 onwards and in open access you will get so many resources so it is called doaj directory of online access a uh, uh, directory of open access journals e books acm digital library i have given the dl uh, i have given the url doab that is directory of open access books then online databases like eric proquest thesis online eric is for education proquest gives so many subjects thesis online so thesis in proquest thesis online so it gives uh, thesis in many subjects but it is a paid source then guides to information sources are available institutional repositories good institutions academic institutions like iit iiss igidr they have their own institutional repositories like igidr has totally which is useful these are useful repositories subject portals or gateways like intuit for social sciences and you can have consortia access, access like for engineering resources indest is there jgate uh, jstor or shodha ganga so there are online reference books there are online catalogs there are online journals there are online bibliographies so just have a look at them and which are the sources that are useful for you you select we'll see how to select online databases institutional repositories these are the sources Now the contents of institutional repositories are theses and dissertations of their own uh, students, and they are normally kept in uh, open access for many uh, institutions. Some of them don't keep. Faculty contributions are given, like journal articles, conference papers, teaching material. This is important. Student projects are given many a times, and video recordings are given in institutional repositories. Sometimes even. Uh, class notes or even the uh, different types of uh, uh, lectures are documented now institutional repositories i have listed 
this is an open door. This is a directory of open access resources. And this is the reference directory of open access repositories. IGIDR, I have given the URL, IGIDR Kautilya uh, repository. Go to them. Now, resources and commerce. These have resources. These are the resources in commerce, Asian Business and Reference, IndianJournals.com, OpenDoor.org. Here you will get open uh, directory of open, uh, um, uh, open access resources. Then IndiaStats.com, statistics about India. However, this is a paid resource, but these are some of important resources in commerce. There are resources in law like LexisNexis Academic, Hain Online, Manupatra, Taxman Online, CLA Online, that is Corporate Law Advisor Online, AIR Infotech, it gives All India Reporter since 1922, and Commerce uh, researchers require resources in law. Law, law Street India, TaxSutra.com. Then Electronic Thesis and Dissertations, HTTPS, OATD. This is online again, thesis and dissertation.org. This is free. Show the Ganga in InfliBnet. You all must be knowing it. It is free. Similarly, you also have so Show the Gango 3, which gives you the topics which are recognized and passed by the committees. So people who are doing research, so that research may not be duplicated. You have to check that. Then profess dissertations and thesis, full text. Commerce uh, thesis are there. However, this is paid uh, database. So your institution should be a uh, member of the same, should subscribe to it. Now, open educational resources. There are 30,000 plus resources. Many more resources are there under oercommons.org. So they should be looked into. DOAJ I have already referred to open access journals. Khan Academy, I will not uh, recommend for um, researchers. They are, it is good for teachers because they give the presentations and uh, topics are covered. This is very controversial. Sky Hub is a controversial resource, but you can get the journal articles which are not available. I don't know whether it is, means it's not that authoritative. But you can get the articles which you don't find it elsewhere. Then Skyhub, JournalSeek, HTTP, journalseek.net. All these are very important open access educational resources. Then there are shared courses, textbooks, videos, study materials, software, lectures, home, homework, quizzes, assignment, journal articles, conference papers again, and data sets. These are types of materials which you look into. Now the search skills that, that are very important and the literature search skills uh, will give you a lot of material. One is snowball technique, which is observed by many of us. What we do is we go to the databases or we also go to the researcher's reference page. We find out what is very relevant to us and then we go to those sources. So this is like snowball, it increases. Our bibliography will increase. But you have to look into, you have to evaluate those. So snowball technique is uh, commonly adopted. It is commonly adopted by all of us. However, it is still useful because it picks up. We pick up the references from bibliographies or reference page and go to these sources. For example, articles on mobile learning uh, is found out from references. And this article is searched. After find, finding this, at the end of that article, other articles referred to by this author are listed by the other researchers. So like a snowball, it goes on increasing. It goes on becoming fatter and fatter and bigger and bigger. Many databases allow track forwarding or citations, track forwarding. It means that if you have searched an article published in 2008 today in 2020, 
you can find articles of subsequent year up to 2020 wherein this article is cited or referred to so this is very useful type of thing which can be uh, tracked through databases so this is very important thing then knowledge of word versus concept search what is better you should know use of this right you uh, you uh, get thesaurus in your own topic so they give broad narrow related terms to search so your searching becomes easy use of boolean logic and or not near and wildcard search these are some of the searching techniques now concept search is always better than word search because in word search you can word search can miss your synonyms like Ladies, if you give ladies, women will not be included. If you give women, ladies will not be included. Ma models and patterns. Then models, if you give as the patterns will not be included. If patterns is uh, the model word is not included. You can miss differently spelled words like theater and theater. And it is time consuming. As, as against this, concept search gives precision. Here use of this. So it can be uh, done. It is possible and use of Boolean logic. Let us see the, how the use, use of Boolean logic works. Uh, there are and, or, and not. These are the Boolean terms. So and focuses the search. For example, adolescent and girls. This will focus your search. This will give material only on adolescent girls. Commerce and curriculum. You will get material only on commerce curriculum. Now, or widens the search. For example, women or ladies. So, uh, differently spelt words like theater and theater or theater. Then, growth or development, trade or business. Here, not not restricts the search. It deletes that. Okay. For example, rock and music, not stones. Rock. And music, you want rock music. So rock and music, not stones. Pattern and recognition, not decoration. So whatever you want, you delete that. Okay. Now, this is a search, which is called wildcard search. You can use plus, minus, or even asterisk. Like color with asterisk in between will give both the spellings. C O L O U R C O L O R behavior, both the spellings, theater, both the spellings. Now M I G R A T and asterisk or star will include migrate, migrated, migrating, migration, all the letters. So these skills are to be mastered. Now steps in literature search. Steps, sorry, steps after literature search. After you do the search, you have to develop literature review. Then place it in thesis or your own dissertation. Then structure this literature review and then write the literature review. These are important steps after you do the literature search. So you are developing your own literature review. Now, by thinking of developing the literature review, you may think that you have to collect the abstracts and join the abstracts together. No, sorry. It's not like that. Don't do that. It is mini book or article reviews. When I say review, you are critical. Uh, hey, I'm going to answer the questions in the end. You are critically going to review the articles. So this means that only a gist will not do. And how far it is going to be useful in contribution of research in commerce, that also has to be looked into and commented upon in your own literature review. Then it is a brief summary of whatever is there in the research. But it's, now it depends. The question normally is asked is how brief it should be. Now, you have to classify your articles into 
most relevant, somewhat relevant, and remotely relevant. Then, while, the, uh, while you are writing literature review, see if remotely relevant, uh, 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 remotely relevant references or your notes on the remotely relevant are, uh, material, is it that useful? Is it that important? So in the end, you can decide, you can delete them or you can write two to three words. It depends on the importance you give to that, uh, hey, you know, to that uh, document according to your topic. So how relevant is it to your topic is very, very important. So it is not only a brief summary. Uh, then critic, this, this, this is what I was speaking about, critic of the book, a critic of the article, giving the good points, giving the lacunas in research would be always better while you are developing the literature review. So when you are studying that material, at that time only you make the notes. And I always advise the people, if you do not have the software, doing this because there are many softwares available. If you do not uh, have any software, then your card system is very, very useful. You take the card to the library or uh, whenever you are studying or whenever you are working on it, different color cards can be used for periodical uh, articles, newspaper articles, different colors. And at the back of it, write the references, whatever you want to make, write about the importance of that and then how relevant it is. You, you can number them and then arrange the cards alphabetically into a box, shoe, shoe box, uh, or any, of, any type of box, bread box. You can arrange them alphabetically so that your bibliography is ready. If you use note-taking system systematically, then you can do that. So the critique of the article can be written at the back. The details of the uh, article can be written at the beginning, at the other side. So critic of the book or article and analysis of the arguments that uh, the researcher has made or further research, whatever suggestions are given for further research, whether you are fulfilling those uh, further research, then strengths and weaknesses of the evidences that have been given by the earlier researchers. This is very important while developing the literature review. Now, place of literature review or placing literature review. Normally, second chapter is the place. After the introductory chapter, it is a traditional slot for literature review. How long is it? How long it should be? It depends on your topic and your search. In qualitative studies, sometimes after the empirical evidences are presented, then literature review is placed. So you have to decide and with your guide. Here, the guide's role also is important. But here, the search is very, very important. Your search is very important. Now, structuring literature review. Here, Different approaches can be adopted. One can be thematic approach. That is, theme-wise, you can arrange the chapter on literature review. Or chronological account, being latest, the latest first. This is called linear approach. Take up latest first and then earlier researches. But if you are having historical point of view or perspective, then you can go into the, uh, go the other way around. Earlier references should be, go, uh, should be given first. Later references can be given later on. So it depends, but give justification that will be better. Then comparison of different sources. This is also very important. If it thematic approach is there, no? It will be very, very useful. So you are identifying the central themes in your research. For example, if you take, take up commerce education as a topic, then what has been the system? 
then themes would be what is the curriculum, how the curriculum changed. Another theme can be examination pattern. Then lectures or teaching learning strategies can be one of the other central themes. Then you can find that this is there. Teaching learning strategies in commerce education has been done. But EQ of the teachers has not been taken. Emotional quotient of the teachers has not been worked upon. And that is why I'm selecting this as a subject. Okay, very fine. So this is again gap analysis and you go in for that subject, you identify such central themes and then arrange those central themes topic and subtopic wise and then give the gist in an analytical fashion, not only gist fashion. So cut and paste type of uh, research or cut and paste type of literature review can be identified. So please don't do it. Chronological account also can be given. Comparison of different views expressed in different uh, research uh, by uh, different researchers, different types of sources can be compared. And again, very important is critical evaluation of articles or even thesis. Sometimes you may feel that some subjects are such that quantitative research will not be applicable for that. So research method should be different. And that is why you choose qualitative method that can also happen. So you want to go in depth into a certain topic. So just for justification, critical evaluation of earlier articles and thesis and saying that no researcher has attempted this. So your value of your research gets increased when you do such type of literature. So your literature search will always help you Another thing is there are many librarians who help the researchers in this regard, but people uh, never approach li libraries for advice. They approach them only for search. Many a times librarians help them as far as the different types of uh, books and material is concerned. You may not know that this material is in e-form in the library because it may not be easily cataloged. So, uh, keep a track of that, go to the library. Then importance of primary sources. We have seen the primary resources like manuscripts, thesis and dissertations, which give primary uh, research of the uh, contributors is always important. So see to it that there are maximum primary resources and tertiary resources are not that important. They are important for searching. Secondary uh, resources do, do not depend on textbook. We are going to see that. Now, writing literature review. After reading the article, you have to thoroughly read the article or the thesis of the researcher. After reading, note taking is very, very important step. And planning your literature review See, you can, uh, you can change your plan till the end. For example, if you find that in earlier researches on commerce education, you have only reference to online commerce classes or online education, only reference is there. You can take this as an opportunity and see how many MOOCs are conducted? Okay. Such courses, how many you find online? How many of them are done by commerce students? How many of them are uh, doing it? So that will be your contribution. So note taking is done with the comments because you may not remember it later on. If you are preparing a card or anything, still, you may not remember the critical side of it later on. So whenever you are doing searching at the same time, do not go to the libraries again and again or visit that website again and again. That will save your time. So instead, at the back, you say that this is the, you write a note. 
So this is very important. Summarize and synthesize. This is again important. You summarize in such a way that that will help you in writing the, uh, then writing this, that uh, um, chapter is not a problem at all. You can link it up with your own judgment. So your own judgment of the literature reviewed is very, very crucial and important in literature review. So summarize and again, synthesize. You keep it to a limit. So that is a, uh, uh, that is an art of abstracting. Many a times people will have to do it again and again. And that will give a very good refinement to your writing also. So these are writing skills. Keep your own voice. Many a times I have found that in literature review, as a guide, I have found that in literature review, uh, we do not sound our own voice or you do not even say what you are going to do. You do not even comment on uh, what is your opinion. Or, so keep your own voice ringing through the literature review, not too much, but at least at the end, some remark on the overall impression of the contribution of that topic in the field and why you are many a times students come to us and they say madam we don't get any material on this topic so you have to create the material it won't be like that because of the interdisciplinarity the there are, uh, you just look into narrowly into the topic that, that is not proper. While searching, go broadly. And then if you're not getting something that is your, uh, on the contrary, that is your strength. I have told my students to write that as this uh, topic is not researched earlier, not much has been found. I found it worth exploring. So it is your opportunity to explore that topic take it up. So, but that is very challenging. It's true, but still it is worth it because that will give you an edge over other researchers. Uh, last is refine and edit because this chapter is the most neglected chapter by people at the end because what we do is, and that is right, I'm not saying that, but don't neglect this chapter. What we do is data analysis, we collect the data. In collection of data, the time goes. Then analyzing the data, again, we give it for SPSS or somebody to analyze or we do analysis, again, time goes. So we hardly have time for the earlier things. So earlier, the better. When you are not sure of anything at that time, you will get good references. So catch early this thread and do the review of literature thrice. First is at the time of preparation of proposal. Second is in the mid and third is in the last period. Last period, for example, as I told you, if you are doing work on online courses, you will also find just now that organizations like Udemy, for example, or there are many courses, they have offered discounts in uh, COVID period. Why this happens? So this period, again, you can study separately. So you can say that I have seen the literature review. You will not find this anywhere. I've seen the literature review and I have not found this type of material. This type of uh, uh, work is not found. And that itself is the strength of the search of topic by the, or the selection of topic by the researcher. Now, another very important area is critical evaluation of sources. How to evaluate the sources? Now, you have to look into whether there is the coverage of the thesis or the work or the article is comprehensive. If no, then what remains? Information, what is included and what is left out by the author? What were the results presented by the author? 
how relevant so relevance how relevant is it to your own topic what is the coverage of topic how accurate is the information provided again this is very very important accuracy of information if you find that it is not accurate you can remark there you can say that this is not, it's nothing wrong don't get afraid don't get afraid of commenting such thing but be careful that it should be correct your evaluation should be proper it should not be superficial now let us see this we have already seen the uh, things relevance of the topic does it suit my purpose then select so selection of what you have searched many a times you will have to reject or you will have to scrap some of the sources which you have earlier seen and that happened with my research also i had to keep them aside because they did not uh, become that much relevant then accuracy fact or opinion is it a fact or opinion are these references then think about the author is an author expert in the field then for example we have lancaster in a uh, library side then that resource becomes very very uh, valuable so how valuable that uh, resource is do not skip seminal authors or seminal articles like we have paperless library with the uh, seminal article for the author lancaster is the author an expert in the field is bias in the research evident but carefully you remark there it should not be very very uh, blunt the comment should not be very blunt but it should be pointed out the if something is wrong then is the purpose is to inform only or to persuade something of that article huh? or to sell leave it aside leave it aside then currency how up to date is the information if it is not pointed out this is an old article so it may be like this so these are important criteria why you evaluate your own literature literature which you have searched now reading and note taking when you have already collected the things you have take then you should take the notes and for that exploratory reading is recommended you should explore what is there in the earlier research for this sq 3r framework is recommended s stands for survey surveying the text so prepare the gist survey the text read exploratory reading i have already said but survey the text prepare gist of the question formulate the questions on the basis basis of evaluation criteria read carefully and make connections this is also possible to connect interconnect these articles because if it is thematically correct or even if it is chronologically arranged still you can connect the articles if that is done now your literature review will really uh, be superb so make connections try to make connections within the uh, framework of your own literature review then questions formulate the questions we have go gone into then recall and review again recall what is done by other people summarize it again overall analytical approach of literature when you write this first is introduction then as you have the studies that you have chosen now some pitfalls are possible one is over reliance on websites and general textbooks don't over rely on certain websites 
look into the validity of website or is it https is it secure website and is it academic website to look into it so evaluate the websites also do not over rely on general textbooks i would say delete general textbooks from your literature review then old seminal papers which are very important and present important contribution or research papers if they are not referred then you will be caught or you will be told at the time of viva they will evaluate that this has not been included so see when you are submitting your thesis and then accordingly old seminal papers recent important research papers if they are not referred it will not be so that is why i always advise at the end also you should review then avoid broad and shallow approach uh, which we are finding sometimes so that it should be avoided broad approach will give you nothing literature don't take literature at face value because they it is the title is like that it will be uh, it will be a review of this this no don't say that read it carefully and then broad approach should be avoided why you have selected should you should have justification why you have just selected for your literature review then listing is relevant literature this has been done many a times by people they just collect the information they don't have time they just collect the articles and they just arrange the articles they list irrelevant literature in the references please do not do that because your literature review gives direction to your research and then it is very 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 important so avoid these pitfalls these are some of my uh, observations and uh, i should say this should be rigorously done of your literature review should be rigorously done if these things are followed then your literature review chapter will be really good and it will give you some further insights into your research besides suggesting you the topic besides suggesting how to develop your topic besides suggesting method of your research because you are going into looking into the methods and uh, methods followed by other researchers then you can decide your own place location or you can give other dimensions to your topic whatever uh, looking at whatever other people i have done you can focus your topic limiting it by time location and then you can say that i'm focusing it on this from this year to this year i am focusing it for this location for pune or for mumbai so right from the beginning till the end if done scientifically literature review gives very very good insights into your research and that is why it is very very useful for your research now i am giving you time to ask me question i think this is my last thank you very much let us have this questions you let me know whatever your problems are we will i will be there if i can answer this then i would be happy to do that thank you i open the session for question and madam yes ma'am i'm fine uh, searching am i audible uh, yes yes yeah i'm fine uh, finding out is there any question uh, yeah. i'm shedding box <clears throat> just to wait uh. chat is open so you can send your questions in chat also
Yes. There is one question: How to do bibliography search for any topic? Ah, uh, for yes. any. Topic. Yes. Yes. See, bibliography search can be done in two ways. One is, ah, uh, for your thesis, for the older thesis, there is end. At the end, you have bibliography. That is list of books that is used by the researcher. So you have to search the whole bibliography, look into their bibliographies, and now they are called references. At the end, now we give according to APA, uh, American Psychological Association, and many other uh, styles, they give references. in the end it was called bibliography earlier so in these bibliographies uh, you will get this is what is called as uh, what i said uh, uh, collecting the uh, uh, references so you can find out what the references are and what books what journal articles they are referring to and they if they if they are relevant to you for research you can take up another thing is online you can get so many bibliographies already prepared so you will get ready made uh, list of books just tally them go on using them so it's uh, i have given it as a tertiary resource so in tertiary resources you can start your uh, literature review with tertiary resources you can give, get ready made bibliographies on the net for example my topic of research was solo librarians and i got wonderful i was not finding anything on solo librarians because there were very few studies on solo librarians so what i did was i found a very good bibliography and i found a good book on solo librarians almost it was like a bible which i never knew about and then i ordered that book so these things are helpful so bibliographies on online bibliographies also will help you then again you will prepare your own bibliography or list of books and go on searching whatever is available and nowadays many of the things are available online if, if you want i'll give you i'll give you the list one uh, one page list which i have prepared to kinnari madam she we can or if you give you uh, if you give us the email address is, i can send a, a bibliography or the list of uh, uh, hey Uh, sources in commerce and in law but to your own topic you can search whether the bibliography is there similarly there are list serves there are groups of people who are with similar topics they are discussing and they are interacting so they are called list serves and such interactions also are useful for literature besides bibliography thank you ma'am there is one question regarding a uh, topic yeah. and technological transformation not enough work is visible how do we to uh, pardon do or how do uh, we do review of literature and similar yes, one yes. is regarding few topic don't no uh, theoretical how to frame a theoretical framework for such type of topic yes no no uh, uh, i i couldn't get it one question Could you repeat is the question ma'am? yeah yeah for topics on technology transformation not enough work is visible in india is this true how do it uh, we do the review of literature uh, i'm sorry uh, on technology transfer there is much uh, work available even in india there are uh, departments of educational technology there are technology department and much work is available so you look into the repositories of iit and other may it may not be open of course but you look into the thesis that have been uh, they are really there it may not be relevant to commerce ha huh? technology transfer in commerce or technology uh, exploration is commerce maybe less but that itself is the uh, crux now you can uh, see the, uh, these topics are interdisciplinary so you have to go into technology literature literature on technology to search this people don't do that people search only in commerce so that uh, you should take a broad approach instead of narrow approach while searching you will definitely get technology transformation is not an old topic for india 
not not at all you will get good material i'm sure but your search okay. should be proper and to the through the academic yeah. website it should be proper you know you will get go through tertiary first and then to the research and nowadays thesis and dissertations are available online they are freely available Okay. Anybody else? Yes, there is one yeah. question regarding pitfalls of web search. Yeah, and a meaning of meta analysis. Meta analysis. Yeah, yeah. Uh, see, besides, uh, besides books, journals, there are documents like they are called grey literature. There are pamphlets. There are small reports. then reports of the uh, institutions we have very important it's called gray literature so finding out gray literature for that you should always refer to libraries or librarians they are aware of that so that is meta search and there are also meta search engines huh? so the search engine that you use don't use only google use google scholar if meta search engines and good search engines if you are using that data is very very important so uh, even conference paper many a times there are so many conferences but sometimes there are good conferences and good conference papers which uh, you do not get hold of them so such things should be searched and they require a special kind of searching skills so that Uh, if you inquire with the librarian such material is separately kept in the libraries and that is why i said ki libraries are still useful you can interact with the librarian on the net also you can send them email but it is very helpful because there are some pamphlets some small books some booklets which are very very important for example i'll tell you something i was working in a lala lajpat rai college of commerce and economics it was just a college it was not a university still we had yearly lecture series annual lecture series on very important topics and very uh, experts were invited for those um, for those lectures we used to publish those lectures now those lectures were not classified they were not cataloged then we thought we should do something about it and i think in our opac then later on they added i was not there when opac was done when computerization was done i left by that time but that was a valuable uh, resources and many of the researchers like dr ram joshi who was the vice chancellor of university of mumbai for a very long time then uh, uh, dr yd fadke they used to come and refer to the uh, lectures they have taken the lectures and we used to give them guest membership so these things people do not know the researchers or even teachers many a times do not know that a college is having lecture series so uh, they are very valuable they are published lectures but getting a track of such uh, material is very important i will call it meta search because you will have to be very very careful for while searching your searching gives you base for literature and so am i clear yeah ma'am yeah. yes sir anything uh, there is one question regarding how to use literature review papers for building a research topic yeah how to use how to use a uh, uh, review of uh, literature review of papers and how it yeah. can be used for building on the research topic yeah uh, actually my whole uh, my whole presentation was on that how you can use that for your knowledge base how you can use that you have to relate it to your own topic you have to look into what are the strengths of that uh, document what are the lacunas of that document and what you need to do so this is giving you direction you are looking into the strengths of the document 
and whether it is contribution to the field to what extent it is doing contribution to the field are there any controversial things so when you are looking at your uh, all the collected material critically you will get insight into it you can use it for your research but that will give you insight and all your further chapters can be refined but my point is your own this uh, literature review chapter can give clues to that to your selection of topic or to your selection of method or even whatever is not covered or contributed in the field of research because research is such a uh, hey that duplication of research should be avoided duplication of information duplication of material should be avoided so why you have taken that literature and whether it forms as a step in going ahead or taking your commerce stream ahead if that is there then it is a great contribution i cannot avoid referring to that so you should always go to shodha ganga you can always go to professor thesis and dissertation which may give uh, the thesis all around the world shodha ganga will give you the thesis in india so your uh, approach should be universal so from global to local look into what is globally contributed in your topic look into what is locally contributed in your topic and then say you can then say that this is my contribution throughout you can continue that thread throughout your work till the analysis stage this is my suggestion even you can say yes, that you have found that the so these articles in spite or even you can say that in spite of finding so many article the researcher has found that this type of insight is missing which i am trying to contribute this can be your approach is it okay Yes, there is there is another yes. question regarding yeah yeah yes there is another question regarding uh, what is the difference between footnote and end note and which one should be followed yeah uh, nowadays footnotes are not followed huh? end note is given if you have to something add in addition to references if you have to something to add to that for example about the author or about the contribution of that is end note but footnotes are nowadays not given instead there are citations so the citations are given in the bracket with the surname of the author comma followed by the year and then in the end you give the references complete references are given in the end that is done in most of them footnotes are nowadays out of uh hey in the research out of use we do not that was earlier system giving footnotes when when we used to type the thesis but nowadays there are many uh, software available even endnote is one of the software or uh, there is zotero for giving references so you can use those software now another question is uh sq3 what 3 stands for i have explained in that uh, slide it is sq3 r and r i have given 3 rs i have given in that slide itself please refer to the slide uh, how can a researcher identify research uh, gaps for exploratory research yeah uh, that is possible researcher can identify research gap and that will give the hey if at all you find it you don't find it, it's okay give that this person has give, given this the person has studied this it, it's not that every time you will get some gap and so you are fully filling the gap but overall you think of all the articles think of all the articles the trend in the article trend in your subject now this is very important there is always some trend that you can look into and 
identify that this is the trend or uh, in commerce research in commerce and i am adding my contribution to this is this if you clearly write it to uh, then your evaluator will be easily convinced that this is really a contribution and what you are giving what new you are giving see research in research only copying pasting is not important sometimes you do that but that is not proper why why we are doing that analytical mind should be behind the research otherwise don't do research so my point is always explore collectively if individually from each article you are not exploring explore it collectively as trend in the research in your topic so the trend is the trend is that the working students are doing more online courses working students are doing more going into more online courses now this has not been pointed out by people or by researchers so i am highlighting that point and i am taking that as my this can happen this is exploring am i clear i have given you an example am i clear okay ha huh. another question can we write rol in tabular column format is it allowed uh i will advise you to avoid such tabular column format for review of literature please avoid that because in commerce at least i should say uh it is you are interconnecting certain things you are so tabular thing as it is you are giving the references all references are given in the end you can give that tabular but tabular format is not acceptable still but here if you give it in a tabular format prepare it for a rough work for you are not taking you prepare tabular format and keep one uh comment section keep one comment section for critical evaluation that would be better but while writing turn it into a uh, text format which should be continuous because research is a continuous work i always tell my students it is not that one chapter is over okay my this chapter is over so i will forget about it no at the end of the chapter you write that this chapter has given this and review of literature will be done we will review the literature the researcher has reviewed the literature in the next chapter so continuity in research is very important continuity in all these chapters of your research is very important why you arrange the chapters in this way is very important and that is why only giving tab uh, tabular contents is not advisable for commerce students or commerce researchers there should be some continuity text based continuity and for that you have style manuals go through style manuals how to write that how to write uh, english descriptions very very uh, important books are there on writing thesis and dissertations go through them any other i don't think minimum other... how many literature review um, no. minimum how many literature review is necessary to be done and do hmm. citations in thesis uh actually we say that for masters degree level minimum 50 to 60 references should be there but phd thesis is a great work so so minimum 50 minimum 100 i will not say like that for each reference that you give you should it should be documented it should be referred to there whatever uh, material if you refer to more material and present it systematically and take more relevant material it's okay even if there are 100 references it's okay but there should be 
uh, arranged and they should be relevant they should not be irrelevant don't just collect for the number otherwise what will happen because we want 150 references we will go on collecting everything that is not needed for us don't do that that only i said don't include textbooks include the seminal books which are very very important for the sake for your topic for your topic. okay ma'am i think that it is almost over uh, yes shall i yeah. shall we conclude ma'am Yes, yeah, yeah. there are no questions. Thank you very much for the any any more questions are there? Any more questions are there? Ma'am, I think there is one. I don't know whether this is the answer. What should be the yeah. time period? Have Are you looked at that traditional matter? Yeah, yeah. There is still time, no? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Huh. In the live chat, there is one question which I saw, but it is the same one which you answered now. But the uh, just the question framing is: Is there any norm regarding the number of pieces? That's the same thing which was in the chat also. Yeah, yeah. Similar. How many minimum? Huh. I think almost all are over. So, shall we conclude? Yes, madam. We can conclude. Yeah. Dear Thank participants, you very much. I think we all are really enlightened with the of review of literature. A big thanks to Dr. Sushma Parwal, ma'am, for thorough explanation from foundation, sources, search, online, e-books, repositories, techniques, critical evaluation, and even pitfalls. You made us to know how to do review of literature in depth. I also thank a very uh, thank thank you very much for ma'am such a good uh, nice presentation of review of literature. I also thank Dr. Smita Shukla ma'am, director of ICSSR, who uh, uh, due to which this capacity building workshop has been conducted and. I should not, uh, it's my pleasure to thank CMA, Dr. Kinnari Tucker, HOD of uh, Commerce in Department, University of Mumbai. I also thank Dr. Hinindan for his timely technical support and most important, all participants for their cooperation and attentiveness throughout the session. Thank you all. Thank you, madam. Thank you. Thank now you we'll come know, back to- Thanks a lot. Yeah. Now we will come back to 2.30, no? At 2.30, yes. 2.30, okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Sushma, ma'am. Thank you, Kinnari, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.